agricultural products. So, the world is currently producing nearly 300 million tons of plastic each year. Unfortunately, although plastics is a useful product, many of these products are created for single use, with an estimated 91% of plastic used once and not recycled. So, it is... Uh, uh, it is... Uh, um, according to the Ocean Conservancy and Mackenzie Center of Business and Environment 2018, the Philippines has become the world's third largest source of plastic leaking in the ocean and has the highest trash collection rates in Southeast Asia. About 79% of branded plastic residual waste came from the food packaging, 12% from the household, and 8% from the personal products so, as you can see, um, the, here are the complete list of the country polluting the ocean the most. First on the list is China. It has an annual metric tons of mismanaged plastic waste and total amount ending up in the global waters of around 9 million, followed by, the in, followed by Indonesia, 3.20 million, and finally the Philippines, it has more than, it has almost 2 million metric tons. In Iloilo City, with more than half a million population generates about 300 tons of garbage every day. 50% of the garbage are biodegradable, 25% are recyclables, and 25% are residuals. Over a few decades, humans have managed to dump tons of tons of garbage in the ocean, land, and of the most devastating element of this pollution is that plastic takes thousands of years to decay. As a result, fish and wildlife are becoming intoxicated. Consequently, the toxins from the plastic have entered the food chain, threatening the human health. So we must take action immediately and find some solution in order to mitigate these harmful effects. One of these mitigation measures is by recycling. Recycling is one of the good methods in order to mitigate this adverse effect caused by plastic pollution. So what are the major steps in recycling process? Before the melting and the dense densifying products, it requires a special type of machine to cut the samples into smaller pieces, and that is shredding machine. But commercialized plastic shredder machine is a very expensive, is very expensive type of machine in terms of fabrication, maintenance, and material use. Moreover, <coughs> This machine is limited since only the big industries can afford this kind of machine. Lastly, it is in inaccessible to the rural areas since it is ha very heavy and impractical to travel. That's why this study aims to provide a low-costing machine, simple and easy to operate, and accessible to everyone. So these are the objectives of the study. To evaluate the performance in terms of operating time, input capacity, efficiency, produced length, percent reduced volume, and to design low cost, to determine electric energy consumption rate, and to analyze operating cost. So for the significance of the study, The community, this will provide a low-cost machine and increase profitability to the end users, to the environment. The study will also help reduce pollution and eradicate toxic effects, not only to the living organism, but also to the environment as a whole by reducing the size of plastics for the easier waste management. For the students and faculty researchers, this study can be source of reference for the further 
development and improvement of the machine. For the e educational institution, the new machine can be subje subjected to technical evaluation for its further development and improvement. Other researchers, this study can be utilized as one of the basis for future researchers and would spark interest for further development and enha enhancement. So the time and place of the study, the planning and the designing sta stage was done on last April to July 2019, followed by its fabrication last July to November 2019 in Molo, Iloilo City. And the machine pre-testing is done on December 12, 2019 in Molo, Iloilo City. And finally, the final performance evaluation was done last December 20, 2019 at the appropriate technology center, Central Philippine University. So here is the description of the machine. The feeding hopper. This guides the plastic waste materials to the shredding chamber. Discharge truth. This serve as an outlet for the shredded plastic materials. Support frame. This supports the whole shredder easily, including the motor. The, be the, pulley, the belt and pulley and the chain and sprocket are the essential parts of the transmission assembly that transmit mechanical energy to the shaft. Cutter blade, used for crushing and cutting for the plastic material in vertical direction. The shaft, used to mount the cutter blades. The gear used to transmit the mechanical energy to the shaft and the spacer used to add spaces between the blades. So I will show you the principle of operation. So the machine is driven by a 2 HP horizontal electric motor and a V-belt connects to the motor pulley to the driven pulley while the chain and sprocket drive connects the driven, driven pulley to the first shaft of the machine. Then the first shaft rotates the second shaft through the gear transmission drive. So, as, a mot as the motor and, and transmission assembly starts to operate, the plastics are fed into the hopper, the blades then shred the material in a vertical direction and the shredded materials directly fall in the discharge chute placed 15 cm below the cutters. So for the performance, of performance evaluation, five trials uh, was done to ensure the accuracy of the data gathered. Before the operation, the PET bottles were collected, one kilogram of samples were weighed using the weighing scale and were utilized for every trial. The volume of the samples before shedding in the container were collected. During the operation, the operating, were recorded, operating time were recorded for every child with the use of digital timer. The speed of two counter-rotating shafts were also determined by using the contact type tachometer. So after the operation, the volume of the shredded material on the container used were, were also collected. Lastly, the shredded and unshredded samples were weighed using a weighing scale and the length of the plastic sample in each trial was measured using a veneer caliper. So here are the materials used in conducting the study. The weighing scale, tape measure, power meter, digital timer, tachometer, and the veneer caliper. So for the result, Input capacity of the shredder. This refers to the amount of shredded plastic material in machine per unit time. Okay. The input capacity of the machine is 0 0.09 kilogram per meter or 43.2 kilogram per day. This was obtained by dividing the weight of the plastic waste loaded by its, cor its corresponding operating time. So for the shredding efficiency, efficiency of the Plastic shredder, the machine shredding efficiency is 86%. This was uh, obtained by 
getting the difference between the weight of the input materials and the weight of the unshredded materials divided by the weight of input materials multiplied by 100. So, the machine having an efficiency of 86% is numerically a little lower than the standard mentioned in, Philipp in PAES, or the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards. <clears throat> These are the factors affecting the shedding efficiency of the machine. The large gap approximately between the blades and the counter-rotating shaft caused the machine to be ineffective during the shearing action of the plastic. It should have been a minimal gap of 2 mm, but due to the fabricator's limitation, the intended design was not properly followed. So for the percent reduction in the volume, so uh, I have committed a error. So it should be 89% uh, and it is obtained So, it is obtained by getting the difference of the initial and the final volume of the material by dividing it in the initial volume multiplied by 100. So, for the... So, this, uh, as shown in the figure, so, the, this, are, this is the comparison of the plastic bottles before and after shedding. So here are the other parameters in the, in the study. The average length of the shredded plastics is 4.69 cm and the range of the shredded plastics is 1.08 cm to 8.50 cm. So the, here are the factors affecting the average length and the range of shredded plastic. The two cutting edges of the cutters is not properly sharpened. The thickness of the cutter blade affects the size of the length of the shredded plastics. So, it, uh, as shown in the figure, uh, it is the range, the range of the shredded plastic, the minimum size of the shredded plastic, and the maximum size of the shredded plastics. So, for the electric energy consumption rate, Uh, it, uh, the machine average electric energy consumption rate is 0 0.47 kilowatt per hour. It is obtained by dividing the rated power to the operating time. So for the cost analysis of the machine, the machine has an investment cost of 35,000. The total fixed cost, the total fixed cost has computed to be 60.42 per day while the total variable cost was 306.40 per day dividing a total cost of give um, cost was given a total cost of 366.82 per day the machine was computed to have a daily capacity of 43.20 kilogram this was computed by multiplying the average capacity of 0.09 kilogram per minute and the total estimated operating time per day at 8 hours. The daily operating cost of the machine was 8.50 pesos, which was computed by dividing the total cost of the, of the daily capacity of the machine. So here is my conclusion. The, the double axle plastic shredder machine is a low cost plastic shredder according to the minimum standard recommended by the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards. The machine on the average can shed 43.20 kilograms of plastic bottles per day. The machine can produce an average length of shredded materials of 4.69 cm. The shredding efficiency of the machine was 86%, which is less than the minimum shredding efficiency of 90 base on the PAES. The machine can help minimize 89% space occupied by the increasing number of plastic bottles, which is an ideal technology for waste reduction and management. The average electrical consumption rate is 0.47 kilowatt per hour. 
the machine at an investment cost of 35,000 would allow the expense of 8.50 pesos for every kilogram of shedding plastic. For the recommendation, the two cutting edges of the cutters must be sharpened in order to effectively shred the plastic material. The transmission assembly should have a perforated screen cover for safety purposes. The blades on the counter rotating shaft must have a minimal space 2 mm with each other in order to create better shearing action, allowing plastic to be easily cut. A safety cover should be provided at the top of the hopper to avoid sudden flights of plastic chips out of the hopper with, which can cause accident. The speed of the two counter-rotating shafts can be reduced by changing the 35.60 cm diameter pulley to a larger pulley diameter. That's all, thank you. Thank you, CM. A while ago, you uh, have presented a video ah, yes. of uh, the process of um, shredding. Um, did you follow that uh, process in the experiment? Yes, sir. I followed the uh, recommended uh, testing in the Philippine What experiment. you did in the trial, was it exactly the same as what you have shown in the video? Yes, sir. If you have followed exactly what you have shown in the video, then I think this reading time uh, is not correct. Uh, why, sir? Because it's very slow. You drop one, then you drop another one. Yes. I don't think you can finish one kilogram of plastic for only uh, 11 point eight minutes. No, sir. Uh it is done because the machine, uh, it should, uh, in order to the machine to properly shed the, the plastic bottle, it should be done uh, that way, sir. So for the efficiency of the machine, sir, it, it is discovered, sir, na during our, our pre-testing that if the shredded plastic uh, loaded directly, all the shredded plastic must be loaded directly in the machine, uh, the machine will be uh, perform shedding. Uh, the shedding efficiency will be decreased, and the machine will have a. Uh, the plastic bottles will stock up, sir, in the machine. There's something wrong with the machine, then. That's why, sir. It, uh, that's why the machine is not perfect, but. I'm aware that if the recommend uh, in my recommendation, if the recommendation, my recommendation is properly followed, I believe that the machine will have the capacity to do to more to develop and to create a more finer and more uh, faster shedding efficiency, sir, and better shedding efficiency. But you can can you imagine what you're doing, picking a, a bottle or piece of plastic, drop it, after a while. Pick another one, drop it. It'll be very time consuming. Compared, uh, sorry, compared to the uh, uh, the other, I know the other shedding machine, sir. Uh, it is acceptable. The time is acceptable in shedding the plastic, sir. So, there is no perfect machine, sir, and the machine is must be developed, uh, this uh, technology must be developed in order to achieve uh, the ideal time, sir. What is, sir, okay. is trying to, ano, is yung manual? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ano, so, the, the, why you haven't considered uh, trying to put up a hopper so that isa hang ano lang, then parang ganun ang, ano, Oh, so okay. as we see, kasi individual. Ah, ah yes, sir. Okay. So uh, uh, that will be put in my recommendation. But uh, um, for me, that's uh, I know, sir, uh, acceptable for shedding. Oh. Sir. 
And then one of your significance of the study here, you stated her in terms of environment, you as a whole reduce the size of plastic for easier waste management. So we are trying to convert this pet bottle yes. into shredded small pieces of plastic, right? Yes, sir. So which is more easier to manage? Sir. <laughs> the shredded one or this whole bottle one? Sir, if uh, that will be... I know, sir. Uh, space... Uh, yeah. uh, the space is not, uh, I know, sir, uh, very suitable if that will be used, sir. So it must be in order to attain greater number of bottles that uh, will be transported, it should be shredded, sir. Anyway, uh, what is uh, coming up in, in my mind is that uh, as a designer, so you only focus, of course, you only focus on your study. But have, have you think of the end result of this uh, uh, study? Yes, so after what I mean, it just come up with my mind, sir, that after this uh, producing or shredding this uh, plastic bottle, then what would be the next? Uh, yes, uh, sir. Uh, how are we going to manage the small pieces of uh, plastic? So plastics again. Uh, in every one kilogram of shredded plastics, it could cost around thirty pesos, according to the report of ABS-CBN. So, this uh, technology can help the end users to develop a pro uh, to profit in if this machine will be used. Um, si ano. Anyway, wala pa si Sir Arsegan. So, I mean to say, if I would sell my plastic as a whole yes. PT bottle, it would be more expensive if I would shred it. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, but in the video that you showed, um, I think you removed no, the upper portion of the uh, plastic. Yes, so, yes ma'am. So, so uh, does your machine uh, has a limitation in terms yes. of um, Thickness. removing the uh, caps mm. before loading them? Or uh. if I am the user, would I... Just throw this in the machine, and then the whole plastic would be shredded. Uh, so it is more efficient if uh, the uh, the machine has its uh, limitation in terms of thickness of the of the plastic that loaded it is uh, where it is loaded so the machine is limited only f to uh, limited only to the thickness of zero around zero uh, zero point twenty millimeter uh, that's all hi Chris uh, thank you for that uh, nice presentation also it's nice that we're talking about reducing waste, especially you're mm. talking about uh, reducing waste going to the ocean. Uh, just only, uh, I think, uh, I just, as Sir Engineer Dosara has mentioned about the loading yes, time. Sir. Yes, sir. I think, uh, I noticed that I think you need to consider uh, the electric consumption also because I think you have calculated it on per day, but yes, sir. Uh, have you note, have you run it the eight hours really to measure it, or you just measure it in just only a trial or per hour? Uh, so the the study is only limited, uh, mm -hmm. and so that that could be one of my will be added in my recommendation, sir. Thank you. Why are you interested in input capacity instead of output capacity? Ah, okay, sir. So, uh, I am uh, interested in the input capacity uh, because um, since the, the, the plastic bottles is very rampant and very... Every, we could... Um, there are plenty of plastic bottles. So, uh, this machine is... Uh, one aims to design a machine that 
could accommodate those plastic bottles, sir. So are you not after for output capacity? So the quality, I'm after for the quality and the... Not the output capacity. So I'm also, uh, ano, sir, uh, I considered also the output capacity of the machine in terms of... But you have of, not measured it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, but, sir, um, the output capacity will will always be the same in the input capacity, sir. No, it will not be. Your output capacity oh, yes. is redded plastic. Yes, sir. The input capacity is based on uh, okay. un okay. Okay, okay, sir. plastic. So. You can have an input capacity uh, of one ton of okay, plastic sir. per minute. Okay, sir. But your output capacity is only uh, uh, maybe a kilo okay, sir. Okay, of plastic. Okay, sir. Oh. It's different. Uh, yes, Why? Sir. Because you have unshredded plastic. Yes, sir. And your shredder should have produced shredded plastic. Okay. Not unshredded plastic as output. Yes, sir. Thank so you, I sir. don't think somebody would buy something with a very high input capacity, but with a very low output capacity. Uh, so the, it is based in the shredding efficiency that it is 80, uh, 86%, which is almost, uh, not all, but it is more uh, acceptable in terms of in the recommended mm. uh, in the past, sir, which is 90%. So, so, so maybe what my point yes, is, yes, sir. maybe you can think along that line, no, that okay, uh, although you would want maybe to discuss mm. the okay, input sir. capacity of your machine, okay, but sir. what is important is output capacity. Uh, yes, Unfortunately, um, this is not well presented, although you have basis yes, sir. to discuss mm. the output capacity. So, sir, the shredding efficiency can, uh, can be the basis in the, in the output, sir. Could precisely, be a basis. precisely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, base another question. Uh, sir. When do you know, what is your base of saying that your plastic is unshredded? Sir, uh, it is determined. Uh, it is up to the manufacturer or the... Uh, sir, uh, no, no, it's not the manufacturer okay, in your research. Uh, yes, you sir. have unshredded plastic yes, sir. and I you have shredded it. plastic. Okay. How I, do you know that it is unshredded? Okay, sir. I determined uh, the unshredded if it is over 10 cm in length, sir. So that's, that's unshredded? Yes, sir. By the way, what make of my question is you use a burner caliper. Yes, sir. And you have only one dimension length, right? Um, when you say length, what is your basis? Are you measuring from uh, the longest point? Yes, sir. Or the long, your test point? The longest, sir. The longest point of the shredded plastics. So, if you have all of these strips, um, then this is more than 10. Right? CM. Yes, yes sir. So, you declare it as unshredded? Yes, sir. Uh, have you done uh, market research or who's uh, currently in the region would be able to buy uh, shredded plastic in relation to Sergio Saran? Like, uh, yes. if you have the, have the 10 millimeter, does they have, do we have a buyer here in Ilo to buy that and the mm. 10 millimeter? And how it would cost? Because it would also be, I would buy it if I could make money on uh, that. Yes, sir. So actually, sir, I haven't done... Uh, I haven't done it yet, but uh, um, I can say na that uh, in every dimension, or in every shredded plastic, there is a certain quality of the shredded plastic that is being used by different, uh, different processes. So, for example, this, uh, the product of my shredded plastics could be a use, uh, could be used for the for the consumption uh, for the uh, for the consumption uh, for the anonym oh i said thank you <laughs> thank you cm no
but we appreciate the technology. No? Uh, it just needs further modification, and we review also the, you know, the terms used, like input capacity and uh, including the standards used, no, for the definition of the unshredded plastics. Let's proceed to our third presenter. So, from mushroom to plastics, we proceed to oyster shells, another method of utilizing wastes. In so we have Cher Lane Briones. So good morning everyone. I am Cher Lane Briones and I am going to present to you my project Project study, Oyster Shell Crusher. So, Oyster is one of the major shell production here in the Philippines. Actually, in 1980s, actually in 1980s, uh, Philippines exported oyster meat to Singapore around one hundred one. 180,000 kilograms, which actually cost 215 million pesos. And according to Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, in 2017, the oyster farms here in the Philippines reach about 1,300. And most people disregard the shells of the oyster after utilizing its meat without knowing that these, these ways can be in use. So oyster shells can be utilized as a raw material in building construction. This is a picture of a house wall in Guangzhou, China, which is made of oyster shells. And if you crush oyster shells, this can also be used as an aggregate in concrete, dry weight, or grit in concrete or, and mortars. And if you pulverize oyster shells, this can also be as an alternative limining material fertilizer to restore the soil chemical and micro microbial properties and also to increase the crop productivity. And pulverized oyster shells is also used as a supplement for poultry and livestock. And not only for animals, but it is also used as a dietary supplement for humans. And oyster shells is also used in cosmetics. And by activating oyster shells or pulverized oyster shells, this is also used to, to, to react to phosphorus and nitrogen to, to react to oyster shells, uh, to react with, to phosphorus and nitrogen to remove algal blooms from eutrophicated water. So you can see in the picture, for the first picture here, it is a eutrophicated water, a pure one without the activated oyster shells, and the next one by adding one gram of, oyster, of activated oyster shells, and the next one is by adding two grams, and the next one by three grams, four grams, and finally the five grams of activated oyster shells, which, which you can see it is much cleaner. This study is actually in Korea. So, yeah. so the next one is, um, recently uh, there is a study from packaging engineering, the first year is the Talabaul. So I noticed that they use oyster shells. They crush the oyster shells and they make it to a bowl. So I asked them how did they crush or how did they pulverize the oyster shells. They told me that they manually pound it. So it took them about three hours just to just to have a weight of a one kilogram of pulverized oyster shells. So that is how I came up with my machine that we really need the pulverizer or the crusher of oyster shells. Because here in Panay or here in the Philippines, we have a lots of oyster shells waste or just shells waste. So the main objective of my Study was to 
design and evaluate the operating performance of an oyster shell crusher. To design a low-cost oyster shell crusher, to evaluate the performance of the machine in terms of the noise level, shock level, product recovery, and throughput capacity. To determine the moisture content, the finest modulus, and the particle size diameter of the crushed oyster shells. To determine the electric energy consumption rate of the machine, and finally to analyze its operating cost. So, the significance of